Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2018 Ram Rebel. Up front is a 5.7 liter V8 and down below is an 8 speed automatic gearbox. And if you want to read more of my thoughts, head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive where I'll be writing a full written review of the Ram Rebel. But let's get back to that 5.7 liter V8. Well, this engine is a gasoline engine. It's not a diesel variant. And some people are back and forth whether they prefer their trucks to be gas or diesel. And honestly, they're very different trucks for very different purposes. Diesels are for towing. They're for the hardworking trucks, but they're a lot more expensive. Let's hear, uh, let's hear the stock sound of that 5.7. mostly wind noise but it's a good sounding engine I think gas just gas engines just produce such a great sound I think this truck sounds great and the owner Paul actually has plans to straight pipe it and do all this stuff I'll get into that later but I really like the sound of it I really like the power that comes from it these engines produce almost 400 horsepower at the crank I believe it's 395 uh, is what Dodge tells people and so th this thing isn't sluggish it's not slow but then again you're not gonna you know win any races this is a very heavy vehicle and so the horsepower to weight ratio is an amazing but still you definitely have the power to pass people you have the power to pull this thing can pull 10,000 pounds basically 90% of people only need a gas truck now like I said the engine is connected to an 8 speed automatic gearbox there is no manual option uh, most trucks don't have manual options anymore which is kind of disappointing but also, trucks are getting more luxury, I guess, than uh, than really utilitarian vehicles. Again, we'll get more into that later. The eight speed's really smooth. Chrysler's been putting these eight speeds in a lot of their vehicles, and I really like them. They're really smooth transmissions. They're unlike, I remember when GM rolled out their six speed for the SRXs. I did a review of a Cadillac SRX, and that thing was trash. That thing, that, that, transmission was horrible it was supposed to be their luxury transmission this is Chrysler's luxury transmission their 8-speed and it's amazing I really enjoy it for an automatic for what it is I prefer manual but for an automatic it's a great transmission although it is controlled by a rotary dial which is a turn dial instead of a shifter now it actually opens up a lot of space in the center console we'll talk about that when we talk about the interior and features but Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the rotary dial. I just, I prefer, honestly, I prefer the, the tree shifter uh, for trucks. Now, let's talk about the interior and features because there's a lot to go over, especially this being a current year vehicle. So, in front of me, I have gauges which are telling me everything. On the right, I have a speedometer and my fuel. And then to the left, I have battery voltage, tack, and water temperature. In the middle, I have a gauge that is customizable to tell me really anything I want. Right now, it's telling me MPGs, but I can switch through here to the suspension modes, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, my current speed, I can display it really large, doing 39 miles an hour right now. My fuel settings, anything I really wanna know, um, I can look here. On the steering wheel, I actually have a plus and minus for shifting, which is really interesting. I, I've never seen you being able to shift on the steering wheel. I know there's paddle shifters, but I actually shift with two little buttons. Then I have my cruise control options, my Bluetooth phone options, and that sort of thing. In the center, I have an eight inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, navigation, heated seat controls, all that good stuff. Down below that, you have some audio options, as well as climate control. Then down below that, you have a couple interesting buttons. First and foremost being the trailer brake options, which are really nice. You have heated seat options, heated steering wheel options, um, as well as your suspension options, which yes, this truck has air ride suspension, meaning you can adjust the height at your will. You can lower and raise this thing, which is really cool. I'll show it here.
An interesting thing about the ride height of this truck is that you can only go in the highest setting under 25 miles an hour. See, I just broke 25, so it just dropped me down into normal mode. Um, and then if I go above 60, it drops me down even more. That's for stability and wind resistance and stuff like that. To the left of that, you get the rotary shifter, as well as your two wheel drive and four wheel drive options. To the right of that, you get an actual outlet, which I think was a really nice touch by Dodge. Um, so you don't have to carry around a cigarette lighter adapter or whatever for your USB iPhone, whatever. You could just plug it directly into the dash. This truck has 10 usable cup holders as well as many other places to put them. And like I said, because of the lack of shifter, there's a giant really hole in the center. And basically what you can do is it has two little phone holders, um, supposedly a four cup tray from like McDonald's or Wendy's will fit perfectly in there. Um, it gives you a lot of different options. I really like these phone holders. It holds your phone really snug, uh, which is super nice. And it has little slits for your uh, charging cord so it can run down and still hold your phone properly. Now, the weird thing about this, though, is that if you want to hook up your phone through USB to the radio, the USB input is here in the center console. So you have to run a cord from the middle all the way back to then run it into the radio. It's just sort of weird. I don't know if it's poor design or what, but it's kind of weird. Now, getting to the seats, the seats are really comfortable, and if you'll notice on the middle, there's a tread pattern. Funny enough, this is the exact same tread pattern as the tires that come on the Ram Rebel. There, It's the same pattern, which is super weird. I mean, someone put a lot of time and effort into that. But overall, the interior is really comfortable. Um, I think trucks, like I said, they're getting very luxury base now. They're so comfortable. This truck is really comfortable. I have room for days. I could square dance right here. It's awesome. I mean, I, I love it. You got to mention the sunroof and power rear window. Super handy dandy. I'll keep that closed though because it's a little chilly today. The rear seats fold down to make a flat hauling surface, so if you had to put something in the back, uh, you could definitely do that. Speaking of cargo, let's talk about the bed of the truck. The bed of the truck has two features that I want to talk about. First of all, it has cargo lights, um, and that's not just the rear reverse light will turn on. The actual, it has two little LED lights towards the back of the box, which actually help out for loading and unloading when it's dark out super nice feature. The other thing I want to talk about is the Ram boxes. There's two boxes that'll lock on either side of the bed. Okay, so here we are around back and these are the Ram boxes. Now, they actually open up a lot of storage and Paul uses them as coolers for his drinks. And yes, while they're really nice, they add a lot of lockable space uh, for fishing poles or rifles or anything you want. I personally am not a fan of them. And that's because it takes away from the overall space of the bed, in my opinion. If you wanted to move larger pieces of wood or metal or any of that sort of thing, you're going to have a little bit less space because of these boxes. Now, if you're a hunter or fisherman, like I said earlier, this is perfect for you. Uh, you can keep your poles or rifles or what have you locked. Um, this box locks with the truck or you can lock it independently um, and keep you know, unwanted hands out of it. But for me personally, hauling more so car parts, I'm not the biggest fan. But that being said that this is used as a cooler, there are two plastic plugs down at the bottom that let you drain any fluid in here. So you can fill it up with water um, and it can support 50 pounds of ice. Now, this being a 2018, I like to go through the build your own portion of whatever auto manufacturer I'm reviewing's website. And so I went on and I built my own Ram Rebel and I built it actually similar to this. And actually most of the options were pretty standard. I mean, it, it had options for heated seats or a smaller V6 engine or stuff like that. But there is one thing that was kind of weird to me and that was a nearly $400 CD player option. Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, whoever made this truck, if you're watching, why? Why are you trying to sell a $400 CD player? 
And so this review actually means a lot to me because I grew up driving a Dodge Ram. And if you guys don't know, Dodge used to make the Ram and then it split to Dodge and Ram. Ram made the trucks, Dodge carried on making passenger cars. And so really this carries the same elements as my 98 Dodge Ram. And the thing that I always liked about it is that it's it's so aggressive. Dodge is such an aggressive brand. I mean, this thing's called the Rebel. Ooh, you know, like, it's like, ooh, let's be bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's called the Rebel. They have other cars called the Demon and Hellcat and Dart. And, like, it's all aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And you really get that with this truck. I think this is a fabulous looking truck. I think this truck looks great. I really like the color. I really like the lack of chrome accents. Although I'm not the biggest fan of the grill, and here's why. I think it looks fine, but every single Dodge Ram before that has had a plus sign grill. And so now that it's it's all wavy, Paul says it looks like a mustache because Fiat bought Chrysler, I guess it makes sense. But this is a really great truck to drive. I'm really actually really thoroughly enjoying this it has the power it's very comfortable and I think that's really what you want out of a uh, out of a truck so would I buy a 2018 Ram Rebel yes if I if I were in the market for a, a new truck a brand new truck this would definitely be very high on my list like I said it has that power it's very comfortable it has a lot of the features that I would want out of a, a more daily drivable truck. This wouldn't be my work truck. I don't do work that requires a truck anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. I, I, don't, I, I don't need a farm truck like I used to. And so for a truck to, to daily drive in, to then take places, but I could also pull my RX-7 when it inevitably blows up uh, to haul tr new transmissions, engines, that sort of thing this is a, a, a can-do truck and really trucks these days are just so good I mean they're so much better than the trucks that we used to have I know everyone always thinks back to the days of Chevy square bodies or Ford square bodies or basically the late 80s of trucks where they're manly and they had hard edges and stuff and that today's trucks are wimps and they have the leather and air conditioning and stuff like that but honestly that's all worth it to me well I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope you guys learned something about the 2018 Ram Rebel 1500 if you want to read more of my thoughts head on over to carmarshall.com slash overdrive where I'll be writing the full article about this you can read about that and thank you so much Paul for letting me do this review Paul has been a great supporter of the channel I reviewed his Hellcat I reviewed his Focus ST uh, and he's always been great with bouncing ideas off of, and he's just been a great friend. So thank you, Paul, uh, for, for letting me do this. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.